truck just watching us. Not sure why. <laughs> How's it going everybody? It's your boy Connor. We're back with another video. This one's going to be short and sweet. We are still dealing with a couple issues with our microphone. We're running the Purple Panda mic and ever since we switched to the Bell SRT helmet, We've been battling the onset of additional and overly sensitive wind noise when it comes to that helmet. We tried taping off the microphone and thanks to Will FXBB, he recommended us to try that again and when we took off all the additional dead cat on the microphone, followed by us taping off the vents in the front, that still didn't work. So then we closed all the vents that we possibly could think of, taped the front even more, made sure that there was no wind getting in. Now, hopefully that's gonna work. We're gonna do a test run with this. But the main announcement for today's video is we finally created an online store. The link is in the drop down section below. It's going to be on Teespring. We have a couple designs. We have some decals up there as well as coffee mugs. And there are some more favorite designs. And as we come up with designs, we're gonna continue to update on it. So be sure and check it out. And if you use Connor FXDB, you're gonna save yourself 15%. Now, just to note, all orders made on Teespring have an approximate two to four week lead time. That's gonna allow the order to be submitted, have them get the design, print the shirt, and out to you. So just make note of that. And if you do pick something up, be sure and shoot me a photo whenever you get that sticker, coffee mug, or t-shirt in. I would love to share it on the Instagram. And one more thing before we finally decide to get into this week's video, hopefully the audio is crisper and better because we thought we had come over that issue, but we did not. It was exacerbated where the wind noise was reduced, but when we added it in post and uploaded to YouTube, it sounded good while we were editing it. But once I reviewed it on YouTube, it sounded extremely muffled. I was not happy with that, so we're trying to address that as quick as possible so that we can get back to good quality videos while we're riding. And I want to thank you all for y'all's patience as we try and troubleshoot this. I hope y'all enjoyed today's video. If y'all do, be sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and while you're there, bump on over and hit that bell to be notified of any future videos when they drop, as soon as they drop. And just a reminder, be sure and check out the store. The link is in the drop down section below, Teespring, Connor FX TV. What's up guys? We're back. Thank you, Connor. We're out here in the field. We're going to do some riding. Hopefully, as we stated earlier, the audio issue, best case, has been fixed. We're going to use that F word there. Worst case, it's been curbed. Where, look at that, it's so beautiful. My favorite spot, baby. The secret spot. Only a few of y'all know where this is at. Ooh. Might help if we uh, strap down our helmet here while we're over here hooning. <clears throat> the thing is, with this helmet, I don't know why, but there's so much wind that gets in here, and this microphone is extremely sensitive. Now, Brooklyn had an issue with the popping when it came to the Purple Panda mic, which from everyone else I've heard, that this was the best one to prevent that but not in his case, and ours is just having extremely, extremely windy audio. So where we're going, we're gonna do a quick little ride to where today's video, we're gonna talk about navigating through traffic. It is Friday evening, 617, so there won't be quite as much traffic. We tried to film this the other day, and we had a pretty rad video, but, the audio had been shot. Shizzity, shizzity shot. Where it was extremely windy and we were talking and we went to review the video and it was just. <laughs> and you can hear me a little bit that it was just gonna be a nightmare to work and edit in post. And it was gonna just sound like we had edited it, put a bunch of stuff on it. But I digress, that will be another video if we, if we continue to fail at fixing it oh someone's on a demo baby someone's on a demo who is that? I don't know who that is what's up dude he's got the street bob oh god as we almost dropped the bike <laughs> he had to navigate through traffic and heavier conditions in a highly more populated area like a major metropolitan city like Austin is. Now you also have San Antonio, Dallas, Houston, and each one behaves their own different way. Wherever you're from, just know 
that it's going to depend on a couple factors more so on if you allow lane splitting in your state and just if people are bad drivers there's a difference in bad drivers here in austin one of the things that happens is people will be on the highway they say they're getting off on their left side and there's the light that's the exit that they need to go there the right they need to take that right so they're going to merge haul butt mer, come across and then just jump across to that road not really caring about who's in their way or they're going to cut a bunch of people off it's also similar to houston where people get cut off real bad so that's what i've noticed here in austin whereas in san antonio you can have more than plenty enough room that let's say we're here with the truck in front of us and i'm going to merge half a mile or a mile ahead so i'm going to try to merge into this lane where i'm going to have to exit or take a left whatever and the person's going to see you put your blinker on and they are going to do everything in their power they're going to hit 90 miles an hour to close the gap to prevent you from getting in front of them thus you getting to whatever your location is quicker than they are getting to their location and that's how san antonio is we're just like oh my god they will die in a fiery death before someone else gets somewhere where they're at like lane splitting you can lane split and people will just automatically cut off and close the gap so that way you don't lane split when you're getting wherever you're going faster and safer but they just don't see it that way okay so enough babble enough yibby yabber is that the thing navigating through traffic the main thing is going to be highways as you can see maybe we're not going to do it right here because this is the location I'm telling you where it always gets condensed. People are going from a higher rate of speed. You got homeboy that's taking the exit a little fast because someone can merge that last minute. And all of a sudden it's going to be coming to a stop. Now that's where it gets dangerous for motorcyclists because people nowadays are extremely distracted. Even though they try not to be, they still are. And we're guilty of it too. We're not going to lie where we need it. We get a text message. We look at it real quick. And in that instance, something can happen where we get cut off or a person in front of us slams on their brake because they panic something and that can cause a chain reaction where similar to this all of a sudden they don't see you or they panic or someone else panics in another lane they come into you because when it comes to riding a motorcycle as much as we try sometimes you're just not going to be visible at all people may see you if they're if they're going to be taking a left or a right onto a road they may look they may look they see you but their brain does not register it and and the brain will tell them oh it's clear and they'll pull out and then you got to do the oh my gosh oh ex expletive expletive and you slam on your brakes they lock up you drop your bike or you just completely avoid the accidents but you still get that but you still get that pucker moment and there's a few things that you can do these are some of the things that i do that i think help me become more visible when i'm on the road and one of them and the main one's just going to come down to overall lane placement as we are right now we're in the right portion of this lane and when we're coming to a stop what we'll do especially if it's highways and all of a sudden there's a slowdown what we'll do it's you can get those resistors that do those flashes of your brakes but if you don't have one this is your trigger finger <laughs> was that movie uh this is my safety <laughs> but it's as simple as pressing your brake multiple times so you're kind of doing that flash on your own and it helps break up that rhythm of just a single brake because they may not see you and that way if they're doing something they may look up and if they see a flash they're like oh something's in front of me something is requiring my attention now there is still going to be that very small fraction where it's they're going to see it and like that guy's weird whatever he's doing go back to what they're doing they're still going to crash into you but that's where it's going to come to just odd odd things because people recognize something that's odd if you're driving you see something like people getting pulled over that's odd because you're also you're curious it sparked your curiosity so you're paying more attention to that instead of the road and it's just little things like that so lane placement we're on the right side because it also gives us a nice little gap so if homeboy behind us all of a sudden it looks like he's going to creep up on the, especially on the stop and go traffic where people just get so used to stopping every so often that it gives us an avenue of escape Yes, you could go left, but with my current lane positioning, I may not see who's coming to take that left, and I may go, and there's someone reaming down that lane. It's a turn lane, so they shouldn't really be going that fast anyway. And all of a sudden, boom, they hit us. We've been knocked out. And it's just something to keep in mind. 
this would probably work a lot better in less traffic it's that we have that avenue we can go straight we can at least go between these two cars and i have homeboy so if it's a big truck for some reason he's running down the middle they're going to have to clear two heavier objects than what just me because i'm just going to get squashed and that way i'm in my little safe bubble and i can just split the lanes and split and every once in a while i'll do it it's not legal here in texas per se there's a giant gray area but if for some reason the driver behind me is just sketching me out i may filter through and just get out of there sure some of these people are going to be mad or upset because some just don't like it some aren't used to it they're just oh what's going on what's going on but my safety is number one in a car you're protected i mean you have four walls essentially a roof and it's all metal here it's metal that's underneath me and then that's it i mean your leg can get broken you get squashed hyperextended you can get impaled by who knows what metal flying everywhere you're gonna get hurt and that's gonna bring me to a quick segue well since we're stopping is going to be how to add visibility so others can see you we got high vis gloves because whenever i'm changing lanes i like to signal with my hands that way again is breaking that monotony of driving because most people are used to cars going in a back and forth manner on a plane horizontal plane if you will like back and forth so by breaking that i'm throwing my hand out that's going in a different plane that they're used to and it's like wait what's going on and it helps add a little bit more visibility to my turn signal and it's going to let them know that is an intentional move because i'm not going to be flailing around my arm and my blinker if i don't plan on turning it's just a little something something and if you really want to add desired effect we're going to make a lane change here in a second you can also do a leg kick because that is extremely weird and not normal at all and again it's really breaking that monotony of that horizontal plane now one last thing to touch base on is going to be your clothing that you choose there's nothing more indicative of running a harley than all black blacking it all out and by doing so you're also making yourself extremely less visible at night well, your bike is less visible sure you have leds and such is this can you go right on this we're just going to stay here so as you talked about we have high vis gloves we have started donning a white canvas shirt oh we can just go right a white canvas shirt that's going to help people see us as well as a white helmet now this was also a conscious decision because there have been a couple accidents they were fatalities where riders have gone down on the road at night and this is going to tie into lane positioning once we get back on the highway that they went down and people didn't see them so they may have survived the crash the initial crash of road debris or crash into someone but now they're ejected off their bike and then they get run over because people didn't see them dude like when i think about it it just hurts not just for me but for the, like not just thinking about it but for the family that has to find that out where it's like oh yeah they were involved in an accident but then they were run over so that's why we started wearing higher visibility clothing as well as the helmet so that way in the event that we do go down it is darker it's dusk right now but if we're out nine o'clock we're down it's going to stand out a little bit more now we're there's still a very high chance of us getting run over because people see something on the road they're not gonna be like oh that's definitely a body that's a rider that went down that it's going to be like oh that may be something trash bag or whatever you know sack of potatoes and that's it but it's going to give you the opportunity just a little bit extra time to make your way to the edge of the road or if you've been knocked unconscious get out of here if you've been knocked unconscious that's Oh, he was about to go, dude. Ooh, buddy. If you get knocked unconscious, you can come to, oh, dude, I was in an accident. Oh, shoot, I'm still on the road. And then, you know, make your way to the shoulder, to the side of the road. And then one other thing that you can do for added visibility on your bike that's going to help from people pulling out in front of you, taking that left, so forth, is going to be, one, change your lighting from whatever stock is to an improved LED lighting. Now... Harley has started adding LED lighting to their bikes where you have the Street Bob, the Lowrider S, and so forth. Even this FXLR came with upgraded LED lighting as OEM, but it can only do so much where on low beam, you can't even really see it. So that's going to be is upgrade your lighting. And that was 
one of the reasons why we went as we go into the middle lane uh, to upgraded LED light ponds. We had the seven inch ones, which were great. They were really bright, but the brackets ended up breaking because I think it was just too much surface area for the wind and it just flexed and just snapped. And we're like, no, okay. So we found these, these were $25 for the pair. So you couldn't beat it, such a great deal. We have all these cars coming out. And we choose to run the yellow. Initially, we were going to run yellow as a daytime running light, like we're doing now, and then white at night. But we decided to just continue to run yellow as full time as possible. It breaks up the color profile because everyone's switching to LED. As we just mentioned, it's also Harley's going with it, some of their bikes. So we have white LED turn signals, we have a white LED headlamp. But then we have the yellow. It's like those derby cars where you have the fog lights because yellow helps when it comes to fog. It doesn't reflect back through the fog, so you're able to pierce through it a little bit better. The yellow's a little softer, so it's not glaring in your eye and you're not squinting during fog. Yes, science! And it also helps break up the lighting where it's, hey, I see a lot of white and then there's yellow at the bottom. There's something coming my way. One important thing that I like to talk about is going to be, it's referenced as an OODA loop but it's if you are in traffic riding around you have to have some sense of vigilance or if you're riding and you see a car you always have to expect that someone's gonna pull out in front of you or there's gonna be objects in the road and always have a general I mean you could be the most fluid and loose plan that if someone pulls out in front of me I'm gonna hit my brakes that's a given some people don't even think that far that's one step further that you're planning than if you didn't give it any single thought. And that's gonna help you exponentially. Because pretty much what happens in a new loop, it's a process of what your brain does when it processes pretty much everything that it does. And I don't remember the acronym, what it means, but it's pretty much like orientation, something, 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 decision, blah, blah. And pretty much if I'm thinking, hey, if this Jeep slams on their brake and I don't stop in time, I can either brake and go to the grass like that's my plan break and go into the construction but my best bet's probably going to be the grass and you kind of have an idea so that way when it, something actually happens if say all of a sudden he stops suddenly my brain has already registered hey this is the plan of action and i'm already registered and accepted this is what's happening boom 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 and once i get to that portion and it actually happens in the grass there's really not much you can plan okay i'm going to lay my bike down and stay with it until I can't recover. Pretty much the point of no return, where if your bike goes over so much and your peg's already in the grass, there's not really much you can do to save it. You're gonna be able to prop it back up and ride away into the... And so if you get stuck in an OODA loop, now if you watch a lot of these first responder videos, because that's where you really notice it, like in some videos where someone's saying, put the knife down, put the knife down, put the knife down, so they have someone at gunpoint, and they're just screaming, put the knife down, put the knife down, put the knife down, and that individual keeps on walking towards them. Say they actually shoot that person with a knife, they're already down, and they could keep on saying, put the knife down, put the knife, because they're stuck in that OODA loop. Their brain cannot get out of it, it exit. They won't be able to move until their body, pretty much I think it's condition black, it comes down from that point. And it's just something like that because a lot of times if you're in an accident, people go into shock, you may not know. It's just, you're not thinking coherently. There's a couple bike videos out there where some dude went down on a sport bike, he sees a car passing by, and he starts pointing at someone and talking to him. That's just a conversation that the individual didn't even have. He wasn't even sure when he looked back, he was, I don't even know why I did that. But it's stuff like that where you're in shock, you're not sure, your body's trying to register what's going on. It's just dumping tons of information. Tons of it. I mean, your brain just processes so much stuff every single day, every single second. And in situations like that, where if you're at a certain stress level, it's either gonna snap, get stuck in that OODA loop, or you're gonna be able to somewhat dictate what's gonna happen. And so that's why I always just try to say, try to have a plan. But okay, cool, moving on. Let me know if you wanna hear more about that. But now we are, see I'm watching that car because they have their blinker on, they might come in. It's gonna be lane positioning. Right now we're in the center lane. We have cars on both of our sides. And with it being in the middle, we're currently okay, but we're gonna bump up ahead because this guy's inching forward. So we're just gonna get out of his way, moving over to the right lane, boom. We don't really ever hang out in the right lane just because there's a lot of people merging and we are a lot of times going faster than everybody else. So if we're in this right lane, but now we're gonna bump over and ride the left portion of the lane 
So people in this middle lane know that there's not a gap between the car behind me and this white truck in front of me. Now this is gonna be extremely important with bigger size SUVs, semi trucks, because you get blocked and people and other drivers are blinded by them because they may not see you because it's such a giant profile, it's hard to see around them. So if I was on the inner portion of the lane and there's an exit coming, so we're here, there's a semi in front, semi behind, for example, and all of a sudden, Joe Schmo has to get over from back there. It's like, oh, this is my exit. They're gonna haul butt, and they're gonna see the gap, and just come in, and then we're right here, so he's either gonna hit us, do something crazy, and God knows what else. And so, there's only so much that can come from that outcome, but it, had we been in that same situation, out on the left, they can now see us and know that we're in this lane. We're occupying this lane. So now bumping over, moving left lane. I like to point where I'm going, let people know this is an intentional move. Although sometimes I don't always use my blinker, I'm still guilty of that. I just kind of make it happen. So now we're here, center lane. When it comes to the left lane, we'll primarily stay in the right side. This is an important one for me personally. Unless we're in a group ride, I'm obviously in the left because a lot of times I'm leading and you just do the staggered or you're right side by side, whatever you choose, but right side. Now, one of the reasons why I stay on the right side of the leftmost passing lane is because there's nowhere else to think of. No one's merging on to the left. No one's merging on from the left. Everyone's coming from on ramps from your right. That's where everything is gonna be coming in from, is your right side. So people in the middle lane, they're gonna be wanting to come into the left lane when they're gonna be passing someone or to avoid road debris if there's a lane closure or whatever, depending on what lane it is. If for some reason you have to swerve out of the way, I like the inside because I can split a lane, avoid, and it gives you more room on the left to avoid. So if someone's here, crashes, or does an accident here, what I can do is I can come out left, come out wide, and I have all this room to work with than if I were on the left side. The reason I hardly ever like to be on the outside of the highway or the inside, if you want to call it lane one, I believe it's what it is, because we're riding here, la di da di da and sure, you can exit the shoulder, but there's a lot of road debris that happens, a lot of nails, a bunch of stuff. So if you're heavier traffic, all of a sudden you have an oh crap moment, you jump into the shoulder, you may hit a spare tire that's in there and cause you to flip, but what's right there? What is right there? We were just talking about it. If I get into an accident, this is my only exit, and I, for some reason I really fumble the ball, and I hit the barricade, or something trips me up and I go over, now I'm playing Frogger with a bunch of cars going 80 to 90 miles an hour, that my chances of survival or escaping serious injury have now exponentially risen, and my chances of surviving or have gone down. I don't know if we said that right. We we're kind of all over the place. So that's one of the reasons why I don't ride the leftmost or the innermost of the highway lanes because of stuff like that. And it's all going to come down to how you feel comfortable. Now we're going to do a quick little turnaround, get our butts back. Now again, this is all behaviors that I do when I'm riding my motorcycle just because I really want to be seen, one, when I'm on the bike and anytime I'm making a movement or if a car is going to be making a turn, I really want them to see me because it's going to hurt if we get into an accident. I mean, it hurts when you're in an accident in a car, let alone on the bike. All, all the scenarios, just expect that whatever you think that car is going to do, that they're going to do it. So we're laying this car in front of us, we're laying this car merged, and now we're going, giving plenty of room. And it's just being able to tell everyone what's going on. Well, folks, that's going to do it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, be sure and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. And while you're there, pop on over hit that bell to be notified of any future videos when they drop as soon as they drop. Wow, that was a mouthful, bud. Can you say it any slower? Of course, and of course, pop on over hit the bell to be notified of any future videos when they drop as soon as they drop. Feel like an auctioneer, baby. So until then, I'll catch you on the next one. Ride safe.